scrappers caught in the act are Ronnie Dahl on the scene after getting a tip these guys were dismantling a building. You know, there was a new law that was supposed to help put a stop to this problem, but six months later, well, it looks like people are still getting away with illegal scrapping. 7 Action News reporter Ronnie Dahl joins us now. And Ronnie, why in the world is this still happening? Well, it's unfortunate that it is still happening, but some people feel the new law simply just doesn't go far enough. Too many loopholes, so the illegal scrapping cycle continues and communities suffer. It's a Wednesday afternoon. The sun is shining and these two guys are hard at work. We watch as they take a blowtorch to steel beams, dismantling them, then loading sections into a minivan. They are so involved in their work, they didn't even notice our camera rolling. It took several attempts to get their attention. What you doing over there? I'm working. You're working? Yeah. Come on over here and talk to me. Right now. This is a vacant commercial building in an industrial area on Detroit's west side, no longer operational after it was gutted by fire. Tired of seeing scrappers tear apart the remnants of the building day in and day out, neighbors tipped me off to the blowtorch duo. So what you guys doing out here? Hey, you getting metal. Okay, you getting metal. Yeah. But you wouldn't be getting that metal illegally now, would you? It was on the ground. So is that written in the law somewhere if it's on the ground? Finders, keepers? Every day, yep, you can watch them. Ron Bebis has a front row seat to the destruction. He's with Pioneer Steel, which operates next door. He's had his own battle with metal thieves. When we ran into trouble keeping phone lines up, we buried the lines at our own expense. It's, it's part of doing business in Detroit. It's an old story, illegal scrappers scrounging through buildings, homes, and schools to steal the precious metal, all to make a quick buck. In July, a new law went into effect, which was supposed to make it harder for the crooks to peddle their stolen goods at scrapyards. Is it working? Well, you know, there was a number of concerns that I had with this law. I passed it because it was a good step. A step towards addressing the problem, but not solving it. Rashida Tlaib has been an advocate for tougher laws. She admits the new one, which allows for sellers to get up to $25 in cash on the spot, isn't enough to stop the problem. I want to see no cash exchanges. When St. Louis did it, they saw 70% reduction in illegal scrapping. Is this the first time you guys have been out here? I would not speak. Why not? What the new law did do was help create a paper trail. So when these guys are finished cutting up the steel beams and go to sell it at a scrapyard, there will be a record of the transaction. The paper trail is very important. Um, it helps us to identify uh, individuals that are involved. Um, and a lot of times uh, uh, it'll lead us to, uh, to other individuals that were also involved. Uh, we can uh, pull receipts. Uh, the scrapyards uh, have to provide the receipts uh, and the identification of the individual who brought it in. Uh, and then we can, from there, uh, we can review video. Uh, we can get video evidence of these individuals actually bringing the material in. Back to our blowtorch demolition duel, they try to tell me they're not doing anything wrong. They had permission to take the metal. I'm not trying to bust your chops if I you mean, guys are doing what, things legally, but you know, I mean, neighbors believe you guys are scrapping. We don't, have, we don't have a permit or nothing like that. That's what you're saying. Do you? No, we don't have a permit or nothing like that. But the owner said you could pick it up. I mean, okay. So who's the owner? Why don't we call him up? Okay, let's call them. Turns out the owner is the city of Detroit. The scrappers, right? They are tearing the city apart. And I don't think the mayor is giving anyone a pass for taking metal that doesn't belong to them and adding to the city's blight problem. And so the new law has been in effect less than three months. Law enforcement officers say it's really too soon to know what kind of impact that it's really having. But I have to say Sergeant McKay and her DPD team are dedicated to going after these illegal scrappers and the scrap yards. They can't do it alone, though, of course, they need the public's help. So a tip line and a tip email have both been set up for you to report incidents. And we have that information on our website, WXYZ. I love this call. And I see they were perfect. pulling that big piece you of know, scrap just... over what to hide their license plate at the end there when you were doing your report. You know, and what's unfortunate, I know some people would say that this building was already in a poor state. Mm -hmm. right, so right. what does it matter? They're simply going in, making a few bucks. Well, they may not stop there, though. Well, and, and that's the that's the point. Number one, that building is completely unsafe. Mm -hmm. and it's they're dangerous, taking the, correct. They're taking the steel beams mm -hmm. up from right. it. But on top of it, they're not stopping at that building. It's another right. building, another building, another building. We need this law to really get some teeth right. 
so that we can show these people the city means business. Yeah, we oh. talked to lawmakers about it too. We know you mean business. Keep that from. Mm. We will. All right, thanks, Ronnie.